So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers with another special guest. Having my boy Kevin O on was so nice. We had to do it twice. So, what question from subscribers is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. And, and this is another episode. It's not just me answering. He's answering too. So, you get to get that double insight. Even though for me, I, don't, I wouldn't really consider it insight. But anyway, team keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. If you ever want to be part of this, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Patrons, y'all already know what time it is. Patrons, you can send it directly on pa Special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't, you still get a big hug from me regardless. I love y'all. Team Keep It Clean, we got some fire questions as we always do. And not just fire G-Row questions, but fire questions, meaning good questions. So let's get into it. Next question came from my guy Joshua A. He said, is the Ravens over-dependence on Lamar a detriment to their growth and what they do now? Um, that the trade deadline is up. If you notice something during the Miami game, only number eight was upset and passionate on a sideline about how the game was going. The rest of the team looked disinterested as if waiting for Lamar to do something special again. It's really pathetic. What can the Ravens do at this stage to become better now that the trade deadline is over? The Ravens may be a good team, but it looks like they're not even trying to become a complete team. Hmm. Um, wow, that is a... Uh, Powerful question right there. Uh, I think with the Miami game, like I, I can't say that uh well for that game, yeah, I know Lamar was visibly upset, but that that is his that's him. That that's how he plays the game of football. He wears his heart on his sleeve, he shows his emotions. Not everybody is like that. Not everybody does the same thing. Like even if you look at um at Joe Flacco. With how he was, whether the Ravens were up big, Joe Flacco would just be sitting there. If the Ravens were down big, Joe Flacco would just be sitting there with it with his hand in his jersey, just chilling. So um, it, it just all depends on somebody's personality. Now in the Dolphins game, <laughs> they, ooh, that I, I've heard some people say, oh well, maybe because of the heat they were fatigued. Mm, I, I can't buy that one. So right, most of these Ravens are from Florida anyway, so they know what it's like to deal with this Florida heat. Um, but it. They it, it not not that they even seem disinterested on the sideline. They seem disinterested on the field too. Uh, nothing was going good. It was just all kinds of bad. But again, we can't just take that Dolphins game and be like, all right, that's the Ravens right there. That's who the Ravens are because it was one very very bad game. But it was it was one bad game, and they've obviously won a lot more than they've lost this year. Um, so and they showed the passion. They showed themselves having fun on the sidelines and in the game and stuff. Obviously, when stuff is going right. But so I think with the Dolphins game, it was sort of an anomaly, uh, an anomaly to the Ravens under Lamar Jackson. Again, like we said earlier, how they they don't usually drop those games against those lesser teams like that. Um, and it was just sort of an anomaly for this season because they they just got dogged. They they got the straight up beat. Um, and they really the offense just had absolutely like no life to it at all. And, and the only drive where they actually did score, it, it was just aided by penalties the whole time. So I, I just um, I, I, we're all obviously ready to move on from that game. I'm sure Raven, they've already moved on from that game. because You know, fans, they hang on to games longer than the players do. Um, but let's just see how they're passionate. And let's just see how their uh, just that fire is up against Chicago. So, Gib, how, how do you feel about just the Ravens, the attitude a, a, at this point of the season? Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head there, Engrave. And Lamar Jackson is a very emotional player, a very competitive person. And he shows it. He's not afraid to show it. And that's what a lot of people like about him. It's one of the things I really like about him, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was, I think, the viral clip that everybody's talking about and everybody has seen Rashad Bateman, I think, was getting animated on the sideline, too, a little bit in that sequence where, you know, he was kind of like shaking his hands a little bit, kind of agreeing with Lamar Jackson, whatever he was saying. But, yeah, you're right. Guy, guys respond differently. You know, I do remember those Joe Flacco days where every time the camera pans to him, the hands are in the jersey and he's just sitting there with the with the straight zombie face, as people said. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do think that for a Ravens team that is passionate about their players, is passionate about winning football games, 
this is a game where I don't think anybody was happy, regardless of, of whether they were just sitting there on the sideline or showing it. You know, they want to win these games. You know, they're in the National Football League. They've built so much. They've worked so hard for these moments where, you know, you, you can look at a game like this and the sideline, people looking disinterested on the field. You know, I think this is really where the fast starts come into play, too, because, mm -hmm. You know, let's say the Ravens, instead of scoring three points on those first two drives combined, they score 10 or they score 14. I think it's a lot different of a ball game. I think the Ravens are in it a bit more instead of all of a sudden on offense. They're like, okay, we're not picking up the blitzes. We can't respond. What are we doing? It gets people worried on the field, too. And, and it's really important to get off to those fast starts now. Because, or at least early in the game, because that can set an entire tone. It, it can set the Ravens up for success or it can set them up for failure. So I think when talking about their attitude and just how they carry themselves on the field, some people do it differently than others, I agree. But this is where fast starts coming to play. Next question came from my guy, Keith. And his question was in regards to the video that we've all seen circulating or the clip that we've all seen circulating around the web. Uh, where is Philip Rivers and he's on the Manning cast and he's talking about the Ravens. He makes that little that little baby jab at uh, Greg Roman and the Ravens for not adjusting. Anyway, said dear team, keep it clean. Hope everything is good. I was watching this video and it makes me keep thinking that winning with Greg Roman may not be the best future for Lamar Jackson. Sure, winning is good, but making decisions on the field by Lamar may be on halt because of this offensive style. Just wanted to see your thoughts because Roman won't be the coordinator forever. Just wanted to hear what your thoughts of, of are of the QB's thoughts and keep it clean. So, um, of course, we all heard the uh, the, the famous video uh, with Phillip Rivers talking about it and the Ravens not having an answer uh, for the cover zero. But again, my, my thoughts, same thoughts as before. I just, um, I, I want to see how they respond. Um, now we all, of course, wish they would have responded in the Dolphins game, but I want to see how they respond moving forward. Now, when you talk about Greg Roman, um, Greg Roman, uh, say he said he's not going to be the offensive coordinator forever. And that's, that's true. He won't be. Um, but with, uh, with Greg Roman and with, with the Ravens, when they brought in Lamar Jackson, I just felt like they felt like Greg Roman was a, a safe coordinator uh, who could make Lamar Jackson's transition to the NFL a lot smoother. And he has done pretty good overall. Like the offense, they always ranked at the top. Um, but it's been those uh, those clutch moments, obviously, in the playoffs where things just fall apart and, and fell apart in a major way. Uh, he, under Greg Roman, I know he was the run game coordinator in 2018, and he didn't become offensive coordinator until 2019. That's when they made that switch from Marty Morningweg to Greg Roman. Um, so again, the offensive ranks have been good and whatnot. And, um, but I just, I just wonder sometimes like, cause, cause Lamar, Lamar has been doing this since college. He's been doing this since before Greg Roman. So I know a lot of, a lot of people are like, Oh, well, Greg Roman, he, you see what, what's happened with Greg Roman since, uh, with him and Lamar. And, and it has been good overall, but uh, it, it could be better. And I feel like there's just. For games like the Dolphins game and games just the slow starts and the the getting the plays to the to the line of scrimmage so late and I I just feel like it's something that's good which has been good overall I feel like it could be so much better and I feel like they I, I just feel like it's so much more um, that Lamar can do as a quarterback as a player so much more that this off I feel like this offense is just not reaching their potential. Despite injuries, because I know obviously a lot of people are hurt and have been hurt. And some more will get hurt, unfortunately, because that's football. But I just feel like the offense hasn't reached its full potential. Um, and and it's, it's, it can be very frustrating to watch. Uh, but hopefully this second half of the season, some can turn around. Uh, but with Greg Roman, he does have a history. He does have a history with the 49ers. He has a history with the Bills. And, and now he has a history with the Ravens, too. Uh, but I was just hoping that that history can not repeat itself and, and, and things can just advance a, a whole lot than they have been. So, Kev, how do you feel about Greg Roman just overall um, as Ravens offensive coordinator? How do you feel about Greg Roman and his role with and for Lamar Jackson? How do you feel about Greg Roman? Yeah, you mentioned that history, Ingrave, and I think it's it's important to talk about that because, you know, he was in San Francisco with Colin Kaepernick, he was in Buffalo with Tyrod Taylor, mm -hmm. and with those two players, 
each of them had a really good overall season, like really, really good overall season. And then the next year, their production kind of fell off a cliff a little bit and never really recovered. Now, Greg Roman's always been a run game mastermind. You know, he's had great rushing offenses over the course of his NFL career as a coordinator and those offenses he's been able to build. But the past games have just not been there for him. And so when Lamar Jackson has hit, had his MVP season in 2019, people were asking the question, will it be the same as Colin Kaepernick and as a, a Tyrod Taylor? And in 2020, the regression for Lamar Jackson, you know, it was there in terms of stats. Now, for, for an MVP season... This is statistical regression, you know, it's to be expected. He, he can't improve every single year from a season he had like that. You know, by 2028, he's throwing 70 touchdowns a year. But I think that for Roman, I've liked for the most part, and this is a Miami, Miami game is not in this, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I think for the most part, he's been better at adjusting this year. We've seen him have bad quarters and have bad halves, mm -hmm. but he's come out and he's adjusted better than I saw in 2020. I thought that was encouraging. Miami mm -hmm. was a step in the wrong direction. And this is a, what have you done for me now lately league where you're, you're yeah. fixated on what has happened lately. And it's understandable because you know, the results of week two or week four at this point don't mean as much as what happened last week, because that's in the now and that's in the present. Well, I mean, it's in the past now, but that's what's going on recently. So for Roman, uh, I think that he, you know, he shouldn't be fired tomorrow or, or next week. But if he continues to struggle, it becomes, all right, what is it with this Ravens offense that needs to change if they're not getting off to the fast starts, if stuff doesn't improve in the areas it needs to improve at? Now, if Roman completely falls off a cliff this year and struggles, the only way I can see him sticking around is if the team says, look, we had a ton of injuries. We don't know what this offense is at full strength, and they mm -hmm. keep him. If he, if he does well, then they keep him and everything's good. But I think also yeah. a point that I want to point out is, continuity with these offensive coordinators, I think the team really does value because you go back to the mm -hmm. Joe Flacco days and he had a new offensive right. coordinator. It seemed like every single season or every other year, you know, you, you can talk about Cam Cameron, Mark Tressman, Jim Caldwell, all, all these different coordinators where for Lamar Jackson and Roman to be together, to be familiar with each other. And obviously if it's not working, you know, it's not working. You, you got to let him go. But I think Roman has impressed me in some areas this year where he didn't in 2020. I've seen growth from him, but now it's a matter of continuing to grow because if he just stops and all of a sudden it goes back to what it was in 2020, then you have to decide what to do. And, and at that point, maybe I'm looking at somebody new, but for now, if he can continue to improve, I think it's okay to keep him around. But of course, if there's somebody to put the blame on, you know, I don't see anybody else other than Roman who will take it if the Ravens start to struggle and the last question on this episode a question from subscribers came from my guy akeem he said ain't graven this recent loss to the dolphins has really got me wondering whether the organization understands how important it is to get lamar an offensive coordinator who will be an asset to him and the rest of the offense and not a liability i have some facts regarding roman's tenor here as offensive coordinator and my question is simple in light of these facts how long does ownership choose personal friendship over positioning this team for legitimate Super Bowl runs. Thank you for taking the time to answer this question. Hopefully we can get back to winning in spite of our offensive coordinator. Oh, well. Wow. All right. So fact number one, he said, Roman, in spite of having successful offenses briefly in San Francisco and Buffalo, was never a qualified candidate in terms of having a passing scheme that is diversified and competitive. Uh, number two, play calling has much to do with timing and feel for the game. And Roman is consistent at calling plays that disrupt timing, momentum, and show no feel for the game. Mm. The delay, oh, number three, the delay of game penalties as a result of him not knowing what to call is both egregious and unfair to our players. So we were just talking about that one. Uh, number four, if you watch the game closely, especially in the Dolphins game, Roman consistently calls plays where pass catchers consistently run routes behind the line of scrimmage, parallel to the line of scrimmage, and embarrassingly short of the line to gain. Must be talking about those screenplays. Um, number five, opponents seeing this on film know they can simply stick their foot in the dirt and lay all players out short of the line to gain because of these ses Sesame Street route concepts. <sighs> number six, predictably, uh, he gets you beat in the NFL Oh, predictability gets you beat in the NFL when these guys get paid to study film. So why is it that Devin Duvernay's jet sweep, although successful, is dialed up almost every time early in the game at the most predictable times in the game? Um, 
along with these wide receiver screens to Hollywood. It's obvious to me that Roman ha only has a handful of passing plays that insist on calling that he insists on calling so frequently that they are super predictable. And lastly, when we as a fan base clamor for more screens, I think we mean to the running backs as well with blockers out in front, specifically thrown over the heads of an aggressive defensive line when they are working our offensive line. I know we don't necessarily have the most athletic group of offensive linemen, but I guess it's too much to ask for an offensive coordinator to actually dial up well thought out plays. Oof, man. I guess he's not a Roman fan. Um, he said, can't wait to see what this offense could look like when we get someone with no affiliation to Harbaugh whatsoever. His guys are always a big yikes. Oof. So um, with all that being said, um, one of the things with Harbaugh that I always make fun of, but it is true, uh, that he, he puts on for his guys. He loves his guys. He knows his guys, and, and he will go to bat for his guys. Um, if you were one of his friends, if y'all ever coach together, if he got love for you, then he will get you a job. Um, and sometimes we've seen where this he can be loyal to a fault. Now, with Greg Roman, like Kev just mentioned, with the uh, the offensive coordinators uh, with the Ravens, when when you can have some consistency at at a position or at a coaching spot, that's a good thing because we've seen it where teams teams that that flip and flop and always firing this guy, that guy in the third. It's usually not a good thing. Uh, it, it usually doesn't work out for them. Uh, but with the Ravens, they've they've been pretty consistent. Obviously, at the head coach position, John Harbaugh's been there, what, what 12, 13 years? I forget how long he's been there. But it's been a long time. Um, and with, with Greg Roman, uh, with everything that you mentioned, whew, it's a big yikes. Um, it's, it's, it's all some stuff to think about. Uh, how you mentioned the, uh, the, again, the getting late to the line of scrimmage. Um, how you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the one that was my favorite, well, not my favorite, but the one that stuck out to me the most from your list was about the timing and the momentum and, and how there can be these plays that just disrupt that. And, and that's never anything that I really thought about before, but it is something that we've seen a lot. Um, and like Kev mentioned earlier, with Greg Roman, no, he's not going to get fired right now. We know he's not. Um, now, I think, I really do think, because when, you want, when you're in the spotlight, that, that pressure's on. So if um, we, the world watched the, the Miami Dolphins game, the world got to see it. Um, and it has brought up a lot of conversations that people had been having before about Giro, 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 fire Giro, Giro's this, Giro's that, Giro's bad, da 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 um, so if he came out, I don't expect him to, and I don't want him to, but if the Ravens offense came out and they were flat like for the entire Chicago game, I do really think that there could be a chance that they could move on. I, I really do um, because there's pressure on him. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on him right now. And, again, because the world, the world saw that. That's on full display. Uh, so not only is it full, on full display for Greg Roman, but it's on full display for Harbaugh. Now, um, with, when you talked about how about hiring his buddies, and Kev, I'm, I'm going to let you get in shortly. Don't, don't worry. I ain't going to talk forever. I know I can. But um, when you talked about how about hiring his buddies, that is something that he's been doing. But I, I, do not see, I do not see the Ravens going away from that, simply because that's what the Ravens do. Um, they are a, a, a family-oriented organization. So EDC and Harbaugh, Ozzy, Bashadi, all of them are going to be on the same page for whoever they bring in. They're not just going to be, it's not going to be like, all right, Harbaugh wants to hire this guy. Oh, no, but EDC wants to get that, get that guy. Ozzy wants to get that guy. Bashadi's like, okay, you know what? No, bring me this guy. They're not going to be doing it like that. So that part, I don't think that's going to go away. And that's like, to me, I think it's a gift and a curse all at the same time. It's a gift because, hey, all of y'all in it together, which is great, and you want that. But it can be a curse because you may there may be somebody that could be more qualified than one of your friends and whatnot um or somebody that you coach with in the past and you choose somebody who's maybe less qualified since you're closer to them rather than the person who may be, who may be more qualified but kev have at it i'll let you take it away now <laughs> now you know there, there was an interesting take that i saw on twitter and i can't remember who put it out but there was a question posed and it was has Lamar Jackson outgrown Greg Roman? 
mm. as an offensive coordinator. And that's a different word and a different kind of twist on this whole situation because I think what Roman has done in Baltimore, he's had a ton of success. You know, obviously the MVP season with Lamar Jackson, he's, he's anchored one of the best run games in NFL history, but he does have really apparent flaws and nobody's perfect. You know, there's not going to be a perfect player, perfect coach, perfect coordinator, perfect whoever. But, you know, it, it is a fair question to ask, you know, has Lamar Jackson achieved everything? Has this offense achieved everything it can under Greg Roman? And do they need somebody to come in and take it to the next level? That's what people have been clamoring for. And when they see the the flaws come a bit more consistently than I think we saw a little bit earlier in the year. For example, the timing was mentioned in the Miami game. It was second and 17. And what happens? The Ravens run it with Le'Veon Bell. They get, I think it was one yard. Maybe he didn't even gain anything. It's the plays like that that kind of have fans and everybody scratching their head where it's like, you know, obviously in a second and 17 situation, you can catch a defense off guard with a run, but they're already (laughs) sending pressure. They already have guys at the line. So, you know, when you see that, don't you think the short passing game would work, but then the short passing game doesn't work and the screens Mm -hmm. don't work. And all of a sudden it's like, is this offense going to do anything? And, And all of a sudden they can't. So for Roman in particular, for what he's done for this organization, I think he's done a lot of good. But these mm-hmm. next couple weeks, I agree with you, Engraven, they're going to be very telling about how this organization feels about Roman, especially if the team struggles. If, if the offense gets back on track, then all of a sudden it becomes all right. You know what? He adjusted. The adjustments were made, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, then the in-game adjustment question comes up, and all of a sudden it's, you know, can he do it in the game? Right. But, you know, if they have the week, if it was really a short week where the Ravens, they they just couldn't get it done there, and they play well against Chicago, then that's what it is. But at the end of the day, for a Ravens offense that has been so good, the Ra- they're going to take that into account. And, and they're going to say, you know what? We have had injuries. There has been success. The passing offense has improved this season. And they're also they're, they're hiring minds around him who I think can work with him. Keith Williams, T. Martin. You know, this isn't just the Roman show. I think that, you know, he is the guy who calls the plays. He is the guy who makes those shots. But at the same time, I think that, the Ravens do have a, a really good coaching staff around Roman, but now the question is, do they need a new guy at the center of that offensive staff to make the necessary jump for Lamar Jackson in this offense? Because look, Lamar Jackson deserves to have a coordinator who can get the most out of his game. If that's mm-hmm. not Greg Roman, then I think the Ravens would have to make a change, and they would want to make that change, assuming that's the answer that they get, which is, all right, he's not this guy. But, you know, in a what-have-you-done-for-me-now-lately league, the Miami game is looming large, and understandably so. But for a guy like Roman, I think that he will at least get a couple more weeks. And on the very short end of that, I do see maybe a scenario where the Ravens just come out super flat. Like you said, Engraven, maybe his change is made. We saw it, and it sparked a Super Bowl run for the Ravens the last time they fired an offensive coordinator midseason. So there's a lot of flack with Roman. You know, he gets a lot of it, and it, some of it is very, very deserved, you know, for the, the play calling and the ability to not have the play clock run down to zero on every play and just, you know, everything like that. But – you know, Roman has done a lot of good for this organization. You know, you take the good with the bad and all these coordinators. But now, again, it goes back to the growth. You know, I like to talk about growth a lot because if it stays the way it is and it's stagnant and there's no growth, that means Lamar Jackson isn't growing. And that's where the real issue becomes because Lamar Jackson has all the talent in the world to become a player who just, you know, when he's when it's all said and done, you know, you can talk about him as one of the greats. So I think that for a player like Jackson, he deserves to have a coordinator who can get the most out of him. And we're going to see if it's Roman or not over these next couple of weeks, couple of months, and if Roman stays maybe over the next year or so. But we'll see what the time frame is.